بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هب تفلا continue on in our study of نصيحة لأهل السنة we reach the fourth بابت from the دوابت الحجر meaning the fourth uh, criterion regarding those uh, principles regarding uh, boycotting someone. So the fourth principle, the Sheikh says, fourth, pertaining to the time and place in which the infraction was committed. He said, we distinguish between the times and places wherein the infractions and opposition to the Quran and the Sunnah and the methodology of the Salaf are abundant and prevalent, and those who engage in acts of disobedience there are therein are the majority and those times and places where the infractions are few and those who indulge in them are weak and are in the minority so again here the sheikh is talking about that different times and depending on the strength of ahl sunnah and the strength of uh, of uh, of of people of righteousness versus times when uh white sins are widespread and ahl sunnah is few that the, these also taken are also a part of the criterion for determining when it is uh, legislated to make hajr or boycott someone and when it is not. So he says, thus, if dominance in a particular time and place is for Ahl Sunnah, meaning Ahl Sunnah is strong, then boycotting is admissible, coupled with careful consideration of the other outlying principles and guidelines that are detailed in the works of the people of knowledge from Ahlus Sunnah. To me, this is primarily because of the authority of Ahlus Sunnah and the frailty and the overall disadvantage of those in opposition. For in this case, the reprimand will be more effective, similar to what Allah said about Kaab ibn Malik and his two companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma until the earth as vast as it is became restricted for them as did their own selves and they realized that there is no fleeing from Allah and no refuge from him except with him. Similar to the effectiveness of the chastisement of Umar radiallahu ta'ala'an and the rest of the ummah when they boycotted uh, Subay ibn Asal. However, if the people who engage in disobedience and falsehood are superior and dominant in a particular place and time, then boycotting is neither admissible nor legislated except under specific circumstances. So it's very important. Again, that's why I'm saying it takes fiqh. The Prophet ﷺ said, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh, understanding of the religion. And this fiqh of the, uh, of the religion is going to give you those tools to, 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 to have tools at least to be able to determine. It doesn't mean you're always going to be correct. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayna khata'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam commit sins, and the best of those sinners are those who repent. So you're not always going to be correct. The alam is not always going to be correct, but they will be rewarded if they have the tools and they are able, the people of Ijtihad, where they can make these types of thick ruling on when there's har when the harms outweigh the benefits, then they'll be rewarded. At least they won't be sin sinful for causing harm of destroying communities and so on and so forth and causing the split between brotherhood because they just applied Hajar based on their desires or because they had no criterion. That's why it's very important, Fiqh uh, and knowing these the Wabit. He says, uh, this is because the objective of Hajar which is reprimand and censor, cannot be achieved in this type of situation. Rather, the people of the truth may be harmed if they attempt to do so. Meaning, uh, and, and here he's going to give an example of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah of showing when, uh, of his statement regarding when sometimes that hajr can be harmful, it can harm the people of the truth. Sheikh al-Islam uh, said, so as a result of this, those places where an innovation is prevalent, like when speaking excessively about the Qadr, divine decree, was prevalent in Basra, and Tanjim was prevalent in Kharasan, uh, and Tashayru, meaning uh, Shiism, uh, was prevalent in Kufa. These places should be distinguished from those places where it is not prevalent. Also, a distinction should be made between those leaders of high status 
who are obeyed by their subjects and other than them. Once these legitimate objectives are acknowledged and understood, one can traverse a path that will be more effective and will more likely enable him to achieve these goals. Again, it should be a, a Sharia-based objective. The fifth uh, uh, Babit uh, of Hajar pertaining to Hajar, he says the fifth uh, criterion pertaining to the duration of the Hajar. So this is talking about the length of time of cutting someone off. He says it is appropriate that the boycott be commem co uh, commensurate and benefiting the and befitting the state of everyone being boycotted, as well as dependent on the type and de degree of his infraction or the level of his opposition. For there are people who will accept reprimand and refrain if he is boycotted for one or two days or a month or two, and there are those who will stop and then continue. However, if the objective of Hajir is achieved, then it is mandatory to stop. And if not, then there will be despair and hopelessness on the part of the one being boycotted, and he will not benefit. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala commented on some of the benefits extracted from the fact that the Prophet sallallahu boy, boycotted Ka'ab ibn Malik and his two companions. Ibn al-Qayyim said, In this is evidence that if the Imam, the Alam, or the one who is respected and obeyed by his followers, boycotts the one who deserves to be boycotted, this becomes a cure for him as long as he doesn't exceed the limits of the dosage, nor is he excessive in the quantity of it and the method in which he employs to cure him, in order that he avoids killing him. For the objective of Hajar is reprimand and education, not to chase him away. That's very, very important uh, point that Ibn al-Qayyim is mentioning, letting us know that, you know, Hajar, again, it's mashru, it's legislated. And we talked about some of the, 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 the criterion for it. And that it should be something that you're looking to bring about a greater benefit. And it should be a greater Sharia benefit. Also, your intention should be that... <clears throat> this is uh, an act of ibadah. Remember, this is an act of ibadah. If you're cutting off a Muslim or s ceasing or not cutting off a Muslim, you know, seeking to be lenient, that this is also a way of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need to have your intention in order to please Allah. So it should not be about making you and your clique seem uh, like you're stronger in the sunnah. It should not to be, be about gaining acceptance to a group of individuals or a group of brothers, uh, you know, if they see that you're also cutting off so-and-so because they are, that maybe they'll accept you. Maybe they'll let you post on their website. Maybe they'll let you come to their conference. Maybe they'll let you speak at their conference. It shouldn't be about any of those things. It's a Sharia-based objective, and it should be to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not bring you further away. And it should bring about, uh, you know, either benefit and protection from the harm of the person being cut, on, cut off, or it should bring about their rectification. So, you know, all of those things, and looking at, as we mentioned, the time and place, uh, the strength of Ahl Sunnah, and the weakness of Ahl Sunnah, uh, all of those things, also the status of the one being cut off, looking at those, those things of when it may be better to be gentle with this tribal leader, this imam of a community, this international imam who's known around the world that you it may be of more benefit to the people uh, and 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 for the dawa that you are at least gentle with them. That doesn't mean you you know you're you know going around and this is a person known of bid'ah and you're doing every kind of cooperation with them. No, but it may mean that you the way you deal with them is you deal with them with gentle and leniency and you advise them instead of cutting them off and instead of avoiding them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct from Allah Azza wa Jalla, anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. And until the next uh, sitting, which we'll talk about the seventh point, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.